Undercover FBI agent reveals NFL superstar's secret double life. Some people can't go near a cliff without jumping off of it. When it comes to living life on the edge, there are those who just can't take the easy road. They live for the challenge, strive to be the best, or to push boundaries in some way. For football superstar Sam Hurd, life was all about the thrill of competition, of pushing himself to be the best player and the best man he could be. Secretly though, Sam was living a dangerous, secret double life, and it was only a matter of time before it came to light. Samuel Hurd was born on April 24, 1985. Sam's parents fostered a love of sports in him from a young age, and he carried it with him throughout all his life. From the time he had reached high school, the naturally athletic young man had sprouted like a weed. He attended Brackenridge High School in San Antonio, Texas, and joined the football team. Sam was so gifted at the game that he became an all-state wide receiver, catching 20 touchdowns in his senior year alone. Despite all appearances to the contrary, football wasn't Sam's only love. Sam's love of football and talent for the game was nothing compared to his love of God. His family had always tried to instill strong Christian values into their son, and Sam took to them almost immediately. Even as an adult, he would regularly quote from scripture and even had some of his favorite Bible passages tattooed on himself. Sam's faith and skill carried him through high school all the way to Northern Illinois University, where he became a wide receiver for the football team. He helped NIU to a victory in the 2004 Silicon Valley Football Classic and became a pillar of the school's football team until his senior year. By Sam's senior year, he had registered 65 receptions, 1,074 yards, and 13 touchdowns, which was the second best in school history. He would also had the best receiving game in school history, 266 yards against Central Michigan University. By the time he finished college, the NFL was already taking notice. By 2006, Hurd was signed by the Dallas Cowboys as a free agent. He ended the season with five catches for 75 yards and collected 11 tackles. He had made his team and his parents proud, yet his time with the Cowboys, as great as it was, wasn't helping his soul to feel any better. Sam wanted to use the money he was making to give back to the community. He began to give large amounts of what he was making to charitable organizations, including some of his own which were aimed at helping underprivileged young people. After playing five years with the Cowboys, Hurd decided to move on. As a free agent, he could sign with other organizations. And on July 29, 2011, he secured a three-year contract with the Chicago Bears. The Bears even named him their special teams captain. However, Sam's personal life was beginning to unravel, and his professional life was following suit. Despite all of his good work and a successful radio show on the huddle, something wasn't right. He was missing practice and seemed very distant. Hurd's team decided to look into the strange behavior. His career had always been spotless. He'd been kind to his teammates and fans, dependable, and always went above and beyond for the sport. However, they were unable to find any wrongdoing. Then, on December 14, 2011, not six months after joining the Bears, Sam Hurd was picked up by an undercover FBI agent in Chicago. It was completely out of left field. He'd never had any issues with the law in the past, but the undercover agent caught him completely red-handed. He was arrested in Chicago for allegedly attempting to purchase and distribute large quantities of cocaine and marijuana. The former footballer, by this point he'd of course been fired, now faced federal drug charges in the Dallas Division of the Northern District of Texas, but there was more to the story than anyone initially expected. Hurd's case was investigated by the ICE, which is the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency. After a hearing, Hurd negotiated to pay $25,000 per kilogram of cocaine and another $450 per pound of marijuana. However, as it turns out, this wasn't the first time the feds had an eye on him for strange behavior. The investigation had actually started much earlier, in July of 2011, while Sam was still a member of the Cowboys. However, at that time, they were unable to produce anything beyond pure suspicions. Once Hurd moved to Chicago to join the Bears, the feds needed to establish new connections and collect evidence to corroborate their case. Before federal agents were able to take down Hurd, he was earning around $700,000 a week on the sale of drugs. 
Behind his friendly, good-natured Christian facade, he was selling copious amounts of cocaine and marijuana for months, years even, all under the nose of the FBI and the NFL. Even his fellow teammates didn't realize what was going on. But eventually, Heard was connected to a group of dealers based in California. The California dealers were arrested in August of 2011 and the feds connected a phone number on one of their phones to Heard's own cell phone. Either Heard was dealing or buying, but either way it didn't look good. Heard was arrested in December and arraigned soon thereafter. On January 24th, Heard entered a plea of not guilty for setting up a drug dealing network. His parents were beside themselves. How could someone who had helped underprivileged kids be responsible for flooding the streets with drugs? He made bail and was let go on his own recognizance, but would return not long thereafter. The pressure on the outside was almost as bad as it had been in jail. His family and friends were distant and disappointed in him. On August 9, 2012, Heard was arrested a second time for violating his bond. He'd failed two drug tests for marijuana, one in May and the second in July. It was enough to send him back to jail. After the drug test failure, a federal judge later ordered Heard to be jailed indefinitely. On April 10, 2013, Heard pled guilty to distribution of drugs and was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Heard has never come forward with any excuse for his behavior or any reason as to why he would risk a successful career in the NFL on something as foolish as running drugs. He's been incarcerated since 2013 and is set to be in jail until 2028 all because he made the worst mistake of his life. Please share this video with your friends below.